dollars a year in my career with much lower loan amounts. It was just me and one assistant did over two billion dollars. I just sell you those numbers, not to give myself a pat on the back, but to say that I can understand the challenges that you face, the things you go through. God bless you. It is not easy, especially now. I know what it's like to start at zero at the beginning of every month, and I understand difficult markets like the one we have experienced. But let me also mention to you very quickly that. I want to show you some statistics because congratulations, you survived a difficult year in 2023 and you have a lot to look forward to. The loan officer population defined by closing at least one loan. Now we have, I think, the best data. We've got, we've spent millions and millions of dollars in data collection. And this is quantified by you have to close at least one loan in 2023. There's other people that say, oh, licenses, licenses is bullshit, okay? Because you can have a license not to a loan or you could work at a bank, or you could work at a credit union, not need a license. So, so this is real data. It's people in the business, loan officers that did a loan in 2023, it's 234,000. Now, we refine that to say, okay, in the last 90 days, ending February 29th, that's the most, we cut it off every month, how many of them are still around? Well, 134,000 of them are still around that closed at least one loan in the last 90 days. That means we've lost 43% of the loan officer population from 2023, and since 2022, it's 53%. So it's difficult, to say the least, but congratulations to you, because just like in Squid Games, you survived, you made it to the next round. So congratulations are in order for you, but you know what it also means? It means that your competition is also tougher. So what do you have to do? You've got to raise your game, and that's what we're going to do today. That's what you got. you guys do every day with Mortgage Marketing Animals and the Loan Officer Breakfast Club. And I'm gonna try and also add to that and bring you some stuff to help you raise your game. So first let's establish a baseline. Where are you? Here's where you are. So past 12 months ending 229, if you've closed the loan in the last 90 days, that's what qualifies you. So for the past 12 months, what has been your production? If you closed 18 loans, you are right at the median level. In other words, 50% of the people closed more than you, 50% 50% of the people closed less than you. So you can see if you're in the top half, you want to get to the top quarter, you ought to have done 38 loans in the past 12 months closed. If you did 70 loans, congratulations to you, you're in the top 10%. If you did 100 loans, you're in the top 5%. And 180 loans would put you in the top 1% of transactions in the United States. You want to know dollars? Dollars, 5 million is the median line. of people did more, 50% of the people did less in the last 12 months. 12 million, you are in the top 25%. You're considered one of the top originators out there. 22 million, well, you're really one of the tops. You're in the top 10%. If you did 32 million, top 5%, to get into the top 1% in the United States, you had to do $64 million in production. If you did, congratulations. If you didn't, it is my job today to help you get into some of these better numbers so let's get right to it you've got a lot of opportunity today so people complain "Ah, that but there's still a lot 388,000 real estate sales every month that's expected to rise in 2024 look remember a normal market's 5 million sales we're at 4 million as we gravitate and you always revert to the mean you're going to get back this so think about that there's a million more real estate transactions that we will see about 70 of 700,000 of them will need mortgages that you'll see. So good news is ahead. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Good news is coming. But even today, 264,000 of these 388 need a mortgage. So you have 264,000 purchase opportunities, and there's still a lot of refinances. Don't overlook them. 115,000 refinances every single month that's going on. Don't overlook them. You have to consider your refis. Think about what's going on here today just because real estate values are going up even if the interest rate's the same it's an opportunity to refinance them and remove mi could be very very valuable to do this but you've also planted a lot of seeds and i'll explain why there will be a harvest coming so today there's 379,000 mortgage transactions remember the numbers i said to you if you wanted to get into those top categories right so you want to get into a category out of the 379,000 transactions you want to be in the top uh, 25%, you need three of them, okay? You need three out of 379,000. So don't be overwhelmed. Think about it in terms like that. If I get three, I'm in the top 25% of people in the U.S. today. All right, how do we raise our game to get there? You have to understand market conditions. So the Fed has told us they will start cutting rates when they're confident that inflation 
will get to 2%. Their measuring stick is something called the personal consumption expenditure, PCE. They are also looking at the core rate. All that means is they're taking away food and energy prices, which Fed cuts can't really influence or Fed hikes can't influence. So they look at the core rate of PCE. Right now, that core rate is 2.85%. The Fed wants it at two or to approach two. We've also said very clearly, we will not wait till it gets to 2%. When we're confident that we will get there, we will begin cutting. So that's good news for us, so we don't have to get to two. So how do we continue to forecast this? And this is what you have to be. You have to think ahead. You have to play chess, not checkers. You need to be that guiding light. When people say, where are rates going? Because I think it's gonna go down. Or, well, boy, if I do that, that's a bad answer. You've been given an opportunity to show that you are better than a salesperson. You're gonna solve and stop selling. So if somebody were to ask me today, it's would say, well, it's a 2.85%, the Fed wants it at two. So let's forecast it a little bit. The next number we're gonna get will be for the month of February of 2024. That month, that means February of 2023 will come out of the equation. And February 2023 was 0.36. So that's gonna go away, which means 2.85 minus 0.36, for the 11 months, it's gonna be 2.49. Then we add the new number that we get, which will be February, 2024. By the way, we get that March 29th. We're estimating that comes in at 0.2. That would put the rate of inflation year over year at 2.69% versus the 2.85. It's an improvement, it's better, but this is too high. The Fed will not cut because they want it to be at two or very close to two. They're not gonna cut. So let's go further down the line, same mathematics. We already did February, let's go to the next month of March. And as we do that, we can see we get to about 2.55. On the May 1st Fed meeting, this is what they should be looking at. I think it's still too high for them to cut. The June meeting, it gets closer. Maybe they cut. But as you can see, it's going to be hard to get to 2%, folks. It's going to be very hard unless these numbers come in really low. I am concerned that we might not get there. But remember this. What we, we should all know is the Fed has a dual mandate. They need price stability. Price stability is defined by inflation on core PCE at 2%. That's price stability in their mind. The other is maximum employment. So let's take a look at what the Fed's telling us as, on that as well. Now, the Fed puts out a statement of economic projections. SEP is what it's called. This is right from their economic projections. It's called the dot plot. Each of the 19 Fed members, and you should take notes of this. There's 19 Fed. These are all things you need to know, okay? Understand this very clearly. You might say you're in the mortgage business, but your product is not a mortgage. If you think you've got a product that people really hate, that's what you would have if you sell mortgages, okay? Because nobody wants a freaking mortgage. You put me in debt and give me a high monthly payment. That's not what people want. You know what people want? They want money. The business you are in is the money business. And the quicker you understand that, the better for you. Because what you need to do is you need to understand money, the way money works and how you can create wealth for your customers and be their debt manager. So. Let's understand there's 19 Fed members in 2023. Obviously, the 19 Fed members all unanimously said that they think the Fed funds rate should be between five and a quarter and five and a half. That's where it is now. And if you didn't know that, please take note of it. This is the price of money. It's the most important price in the world is the price of money. And right now it is between five and a quarter and five and a half percent. Remember, the United States is the reserve currency. So this is the most important price in the world, five and a quarter percent. In 2024, what the Fed has told us is that Two members say no cuts, one says one cut, five members say three, two, two cuts, seven members say three cuts, four members say four cuts, one says six cuts. So this is what the Fed has told us where they think that we're going to be. So lower rates this year. But look at 2025. Again, lower rates compared to this. 2026, lower rates. Look at the direction, everybody. There's good news ahead. And what you need to understand is that you've suffered through the worst. I want you to look at this with optimism. You've planted seeds that are going to be harvested with refinance and then refinance again and then refinance again. There is much better times ahead. And think about people that are trapped in their homes. The difference will be easier to get out of because the move up rate will be easier and easier. You've made it through the hard part. You should look forward to the future with optimism, but you have to sharpen your skills. Now, remember I said the dual mandate. The Fed also tells us unemployment. So the unemployment rate today is how much, team? Who knows what the unemployment rate is today? And if you don't remember, you need to start understanding these things. It's 3.9%, okay? That's the unemployment rate. Now, three of the of the 19 Fed members say, we think the unemployment rate is gonna be between 3.8 and 3.9. We're already at 3.9. 
nine members say four to 4.1. That means 12 of the 19 Fed members think it stays 4.1 or less. What happens if it gets to 4.2? These people are gonna get surprised. The Congressional Budget Office, really smart economists, they say it's gonna be 4.4%. That's what they said. If it gets to 4.4%, then 17 of the 19 Fed members, as you can see here, these people think between 4.2 and 4.3, five more. 17 of the 19 Fed members are gonna say, oops, we got it wrong. The economy's in worse shape. And even if inflation is close, doesn't get quite to 2%, like I showed you, we need to start cutting and we need to start cutting more aggressively. So you will see faster rate cuts. I think the unemployment rate will get there. There's a lot of reasons. It's a whole other presentation. Maybe you'll have me guys, you guys will have me come back and I'll explain what the holes are in the BLS reports and why the unemployment picture is much worse than we're letting on. So we know rates are coming down. Now, what about if your customer says, hey, wait a minute, Barry, you just told me rates are going to come down. So what am I going to do? I'm going to wait. Let me give you the script for this team, because here's what I would say to you. Remember, I was a loan originator. So if my customer says to me, I'm going to wait, or my realtor says, well, should the customer wait for rates to come down? It's not what they want to hear. Or if the, if the realtor is hearing this from their customer, how do you fix it? I want you to solve. Here's how you solve. Here's the script. Well, you're going to say, well, well you may have heard of the saying, marry the home and date the rate. Oh, yeah, it sounds cute, this and that. But let me put some teeth behind it. My competitors might just say it, but let me do the math and show you. So here's a few things you should know, Mr. Ms. Realtor or Mr. Ms. Client. Number one, that higher rate today may actually be your best friend. Well, what do you mean that's my best friend? Because here's the facts. According to the National Association of Realtors, for every 1% drop in rates, 5 million people, 5 million more people become eligible buyers. Of course, not all of them will buy, but a good portion of them will. And if that happens, what do you think happens to inventory? You think inventory is tight now? It's gonna become even tighter, which means you'll have less choices. But what it'll also do, the big thing, is upside pressure on prices. That upside pressure on prices is something when you think about it, do you wanna wait and pay more? Or do you wanna buy now and get the benefit of that? See, I wanna do the math for you. And fortunately, we could do that. We have access to appreciation in every single particular zip code. And we could pick any place, just in this location in New Jersey, you can see that the appreciation is a little over 4%. So on an $800,000 home, if you bought it today at six and three quarters, in other words, marrying the home, later on, you could refinance a year from now when rates come down to five and three quarters, in other words, date the rate. So you marry the home, you date the rate, you refinance that. But there's a cost for that. So let me quantify the cost. And as you can see here, the difference in payment is $258 a month. If I multiply that for the year that you'd have that higher rate for until you refinance it, you're gonna spend $3,093 more by dating the rate. But you also have an additional cost to date the rate, and that is the cost to refinance. Now, it might be different in different parts of the country. I'm just gonna throw a number out there, 4,000 bucks. So what is my cost to date the rate? It is $7,100. It's an expensive date. But what is my benefit for marrying the home? We know that too, and here's what people don't think about that 4% appreciation on $800,000 home, in this case, 4.24%, $34,000. The benefit of marrying the home, 34,000, minus the cost of dating the rate of 7,100, tells you that your net benefit is $26,835. This is why you marry the home and date the rate. But your competition is just, oh, marry the home and date the rate, sounds cute, sounds fun. It's just a cutesy saying, unless you put the teeth behind it, okay. Let's show you a couple of other things. What's our rate forecast? We think 30 year fixed rates go from high sixes down into the lower sixes, high fives. It will not be a straight line, but it's gonna unlock a lot of move up bars. You see how sensitive it is, right? As soon as you start getting to lower rates, you see the tick up in activity. The 10 year treasury, we think the highs are in at about 4.4, but we see it moving towards 3%. Maybe in the mid threes, maybe in the low threes, of course a lot can change. We could get some surprises, but this is the forecast that we see. now. Let's pick up some ways to make success in today's market. So a few quick things. Now, you guys are successful loan originators. You probably have a shit ton of pre-calls. So you get a call from a realtor. It goes, oh, hey, Barry, great news. You know, that client, boy, oh, boy, it's been a long haul. We've been showing them a lot of homes, and this one didn't fit here. This one wasn't right there. This one, they didn't like this. We finally found a home, and it checks off all the boxes. They really, really like it. So I convinced them to put in a full price offer. It's $630,000, they're going in full price. You say, great. Now, the next day the realtor calls you, Barry, guess what? What happened? We lost the deal. Why? Well, they got outbid. Somebody came in at 640 and they got outbid. What is your response? As their 
advisor. Is it, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, well, I'm right here if you need me, call me if they find something else, because that's what 99.9% .9 of your competition is saying. But that's not you, because you're going to solve instead of sell. Here is the script for you. Okay, Mr. Ms. Realtor, hang on a minute. I've got all their data here. First, let me do the math and see if I can get them to qualify based on appraisal, down payment, um, income, to go above 640, let's say to 645. Guess what? They can do it. They could bid 15,000 above asking price and go to 645 and win the home of their dreams. Yeah, Barry, but I'm not sure they're gonna do that emotionally. I don't know, they're hesitant to spend $15,000 over asking price. They think it's, it's too much. Let's do this. Let's answer two very important questions. Question number one, how long will it take for them to break even? In other words, how long will it take for this home that's worth 630 to be worth 645? And two, what happens in the future? And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna break down what it costs them in down payment and what it costs them in, in a monthly payment. And they'll see it's a small difference, but let's first wrap their head around this. So fortunately, I have appreciation for every single zip code and the appreciation in this particular zip code that they're buying in is 4%, 4.01 to be exact, which means it will only take 4.9 months to break even from today. If they close 60 days from now, 45 days from now, it'll take around three months to break even. Oh, Barry, that's, that's nothing. Three months and they break even? Yes. What about the future though? What about five years from now? Is this a good investment? Well, we have the forecasted appreciation per year for the next five years, it's 4.28%. And as you can see, that for this zip code, it lines up pretty well for what we've seen for the last 63 years, it's been 4.51%. So at just 4.28% appreciation, how much will this home be worth? It's hard to do. As smart as you guys are, 4.28% per year, for five years, compounded annually on $630,000. Hard to do, hard for your realtor to do, hard for your customer to do. That's why we gotta do the math. And when we do, we see that this home will be worth $783,000, yes. Now they paid 645. Minus, so 783 minus 645, they will make a profit of $138,000. Here's your mic drop. This is where they say, yes, let's move forward. Let's win the home of our dreams. But without doing the math, it's difficult for your customer to see it. Let me take your customer through by the hand and show them. Here's where we are today. Here's where they'll be 4.9 months from now, break even. Here's where they'll be a year from now, two years, three years, four years, five years from now. And I will co-brand it with you, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, in a beautiful report. And if you go to our Facebook page or website, you see that I am giving you an actual case study here. This stuff works. We get dozens and dozens and dozens of these every single week where people are winning. We actually did one with Sean Herrero yesterday. The guy went from zero five years ago to over 100 million in 2023. Big part of his strategy is exactly what I just showed you. He's solving instead of selling. You want to be solving instead of selling. This is solving. What if you talk to this to your realtors? What if you did a Zoom call for your realtors? What if you went in instead of with a freaking bagel or a donut? What you did is you said, let me give you a scenario. Let me show you, are you having this obstacle? Even if they don't have this specific case, what you're able to do is the two that I just showed you, you're able to then show that you are a person who solves instead of sells so that when they have a problem, they want to come to you. Let me show you one more quick one here, buying versus renting. There's so much negativity right now about the housing market. People are saying, give up on, on buying. Renting is the way to go. I'm hearing this more and more and more. It's a huge problem. Team, the wealth creation disparity is huge. Do you know, a couple of quick statistics. According to Kiplinger's, two thirds of everyone's net worth in the United States is from equity in their home. Two thirds. It's very hard to get rich renting. In fact, the net worth of a homeowner, take this down, net worth of a homeowner is 40 times that of a renter. You can't get rich renting, folks. You have to be a owner of real estate. So let's help people do that. Another case study, actual case study, $500,000 home, $400,000, a 450 mortgage, 90 LTV, 7% rate, monthly payment, 4378. That's where we are if you purchase the home. Now, what if they compared it to renting for the same kind of home? Well, the renting is a lot cheaper. It's $727 cheaper. They say, I'm going to rent. But what they don't contemplate is they take a look at the snapshot today. Renewal rents are going up at 5% a year. You've got to do the math because people don't understand what that means. They think they're going to be in this home for nine years, so it's going to have a big effect. Now, look, I would suggest you use a concept called a steel man argument. I will teach it to you. I'm a certified negotiation coach. The steel man argument is important. 
rather than me butting heads with you, if you disagree with me, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at your argument and I'm going to try and even make it stronger with things that you may not have thought of. Well, let me tell you a couple of other good things about renting. Number one, you've got the benefit that your taxes won't go up because if you buy, your taxes are going to go up. Two, repairs. You're going to have your landlord pay repairs, but if you bought, you'd have that repair expense. So I want to consider those two things for you too. And number three, the cost to buy and the cost to sell is important to take into consideration because you wouldn't have that as a renter. So those are even more things to consider that make it better to rent and worse to buy. So let's put those all into the mix. But now what we also have to do is we have to consider appreciation. And in this particular zip code, the forecast for the next nine years is 4.13. And history tells us in this zip code, it's been 4.2. So as you can see, it's very close to in alignment with it, all by just seven hundredths of 1%. So when we do the math here, we can see the comparison. Yes, you're $727 a month cheaper initially by renting. But watch what starts to happen with that 5% increase. Here's your rental bar goes up, up, up. Now you see this little white line here? That's because the black portion is principal. Principal is your own money. It's a forced savings account. Just in the fourth year, you're already spending more money renting than you would buying. And you can see it accelerates dramatically. And you're actually cash flow wise worse off in year six. So let me do some math for you. If you took all your costs for the nine years of renting, it'd be $483,000. If you took all your costs for buying, it would be 480. So you're actually a little bit cheaper. $2,000 cheaper to buy than it is to rent. That's a benefit. But the real benefit comes from this black section here. That's your principal because that's a forced savings account. You're going to accumulate in the first year $4,500 there. But by the ninth year, you've accumulated $55,000 because you've taken the loan from $450 to $494. To, three, to $394, forgive me. You've got an extra $55,000 forced savings in your net worth that you've built in equity. In addition to that, you got a couple of other benefits. Number one, the biggest one, the appreciation, just 4.13%. Would it surprise you that that will give you $219,000? Do the math. People don't do the math. 4.13 compounded annually for nine years on $500,000 purchase gives you an extra 219. That home's going to be worth 719 nine years from now. Plus, you get a tax benefit. But we're careful to get the exact way to compute it. And it's your tax benefit above what you get as a renter because you do get a tax benefit as a renter. But on top of that, you get an additional $21,000 as a buyer. So we add that too. But there's a negative, the cost to sell as well. Let's put that in there based on the future value. So the overall benefit is $245,000. But if they don't see this, they're just thinking about the $700 cheaper in the first year. This is what an advisor does. This is solving instead of selling. And you can see the difference every year. Eight years, seven years, six years, five years. It's great every year. But Mr. and Mrs. Client, Here's the thing. If you're going to be there for, let's say, a year and a half, you need to be renting this place. Do not buy it because the cost to buy and sell overwhelm the benefits. So you need to be doing that. But if you're going to be in this home greater than a year and a half, two years, three years, four years, why are you not buying this home? You need to think about creating wealth. That's why renters have 40 times less the net worth because nobody shows them this. Now they be dealing with you who is solving instead of selling. Here's a beautiful way to co-brand this with your realtor and show it. Now, quick things about housing. I'm gonna go very, very quick here and try and go quick couple of points on housing. There's not a bubble. In 2007, when there was, was 4 million units for sale. Today, there's 1 million units. But our population has grown from 301 million to 340. 39 million more people, 4 million fewer units. Look at real estate values every year in the last 81 years. They've gone up 75 down six. One of them was less than one year. Everybody looks at the recent thing and says, it's got to be a bubble. It's got to crash. It's got to crash. But we have precedent for this. It doesn't have to crash. Look here. It went up much more. In, six, in five years, it went up 118%. If you said, oh, it's got to crash, I'm going to wait. Well, you had to wait 59 years before it happened. And you missed out along the way. Look at the double digit gains. Here it went up another 93%. Look at these double digits, double digits. You missed out on a lot. Everybody worries about this. But as I explained, underwriting guidelines are different. Here it was fog up a mirror. Totally different today. Inventory, population. This is a big one. Builders were putting up 2 million homes a year here. Today, not even 1.5 million. But look at households being formed. Much greater here, much less here. This was a result of lower births from 1973 when abortions were legalized. 33 years later in 2006, much fewer first-time home buyers. These are the differences. Look at any 10-year period. In all but one time, if you purchased your home and held it for 10 years, you made a huge amount of money. In 2006 was the only time, but if you put your money in the stock market, you lost half your money 
here you lost less than 3% of your money. Folks, our forecast for real estate is 5% appreciation. Transactions will go up. 5% is important. A $500,000 purchase price. Teach this lesson. 10% down is a $50,000 investment. 5% on $500,000 is a $25,000 gain. That's your profit on a $50,000 investment. It's 50% return. It's not a 5% return. It's 50% return. Team, take a look at this. You might be already be doing I have nothing to do with it. I'm just telling you, I speak to people and they win. I do the opening scene on this for CNBC, for Bloomberg. It's American Dream TV. Then it goes to local where people are actually able to be highlighted. They highlight their realtor. They highlight a listing. It is working. They're killing it. Take this QR code and see if your area is available. I have nothing to do with it. It's just an idea that you can do it. I only am telling you this because I have first-hand knowledge that the people that are doing it, I'm on the conference calls, they're slaying it. You may want to consider doing it if you're not doing it already. So there you have that. Uh, team, what would I be doing today? I would access our MB estimate because what this will do is it'll give you the entire neighborhood and give you an AVM. I would take this and give it to every listing realtor, every realtor. Before you go on to your next listing, let me show you something that can help you keep those individuals into a better range of what they should sell their home for. I'd have it at an open house. I'd also have it to show every prospective buyer to see the value they're getting. Then I'll also pull the comps for you. This takes you one minute on our site. And what you can do is on an interactive map, do the work for the realtor, give them a neighborhood report. So when they go to that listing, it's much more professional. Use our housing index. This is a great touch point with real estate agents. And as you notice here, look at the housing index, activity picking up in March, price direction, firming, and you can see in your own region too. Take the survey, send it to your realtor so they can take the survey. It's an excuse to have a touch point with them. Use it. Forecasted appreciation is very important. And our real, our, our real estate report card does that. Use this tool. It shows you the viability of new blood coming in and renters, income in that area, the inventory, homes being built. It shows you the demographics. It shows you historicals, everything you want to know that you can co-brand with your realtor. In fact, in the book, The Art of War by Sun Tzu, he said, every battle is won or lost before it's ever fought. Why are you going to a realtor with a bagel, with a donut, or just saying, hey, uh, I'd love to work with you. What you want to do is pull up these things, do it on their listing, do it on a recent sale, so it triggers their reticular activator and give them an appreciation report, real estate report card. Arm them, say, show this at your open houses, show this at what when you're speaking to a prospective buyer. And let me give you some final numbers here. Median LO production, as I explained to you, overall, for the past 12 months, this you have to qualify by doing a loan in the last 90 days. If you did 18 transactions or 5.2 million, 5.3 million, you are in the median. In other words, 50% of people did more, 50% of people did less. I want to show you something very interesting. If you had, if you did not have MBS Highway, you averaged 16 and 4.6 million. But if you have MBS Highway, those individuals did 24 transactions or 8.6 million. That is a difference, ladies and gentlemen, of eight transactions for $4 million. If you get paid a point alone, 100 basis points, you make $40,000 more compared to those who don't have it with MBS Highway. And then there's you know, other things that we do as well. But team, if you want to get on, Jake at MBS Highway, Mark Mortgage Marketing Animals gets 40% discount, 40% off. If you want to take advantage of it today, Jake at MBS Highway, team, Hope you decide to take a look at that. Jake at MBS Highway, 40% off. If you want to stay in touch with me, I am Barry Habib on Instagram. Put a lot of stuff. Thank you. I think we're coming in dead on time. Love you guys. And uh, I'm here for you if you need me to just answer any quick questions, Frank. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sure that we're, we've got plenty of questions. But, oh, my gosh. You know, first of all, we just have to, uh, of course, give Barry Habib, everybody, just a huge. I, I, would, I would say we'd all make a fortune if we invest in the stock and the coffee that he drank this morning, man. That was awesome. <laughs> that was great. That was awesome. Thank you, you. you know what I appreciate about you, Barry, when you give a presentation? If you've got a 30-minute time frame, you make it. Like, you don't, you know how to, you were very cognizant of the time and everybody's time. So thank you for that. We really appreciate you getting a whole lot of information in uh, in, a, in a short period of time. If you hey, do, hey, have, just real quick. Hey, Barry. Give me one thing to do. The one thing that I would make sure that I did, aside from, from, from joining Mortgage Marketing Animals, is the one thing that I would make sure that I do is I would truly be a master of my craft and be an advisor. And I would understand that, that a tool like this is, is, or AI is going to replace a lot of the things that we can do. I, I truly believe that you have to be a master of your craft 
You have to use these tools, use this data, and be that advisor. It is not just talk. It is a way of life. We know that you survived to the next round. You've got to get better. Uh, obviously, I, I do believe that we try and strive for that as providing that an MBS highway with these. It's this selling approach, this solving approach that I think is what people, and the numbers bear it out. You can see the difference. You know, it, it's, it's a rather significant increase if you're using these tools. It's, it's the data. They don't lie. You know, the facts are facts. Um, use these tools. Take that type of leadership role within your own business. Uh, consider yourself a debt manager. Consider yourself an advisor and live and breathe it. Don't just say it. And, and, and uh, what was that? I'm, I'm a little slow. What was that? Uh, what was that? What do I do to, to be a part of MBS Jake, Highway? Jake at MBS Highway. It's the only way you can get that discount. Otherwise, it's 200 bucks a month or $2,000 a year. If you go to the site, don't do it that way. Jake at MBS Highway, he knows. Just say you are on the Mortgage Marketing Animals call and Loan Officer Breakfast Club. You will get that 40% discount because of you guys. All right. I appreciate that. And just... Uh, and, and I think everybody knows this, and, and not that it's it, it's okay to do it the other way, but uh, you know, Barry and myself, we're just uh, we're, we're, we belong to each other's fan club, so there's no rev share or anything like that. That's correct. So, uh, we, we we enjoy hanging out with Barry because he brings uh, just great stuff uh, to the industry and has so for years. So uh, good stuff, Barry. Appreciate you being here. And uh, Frank, uh, thanks uh, thanks for always uh, just finding excellent people to have here on uh, on our morning show. Good stuff, man. Cool. Carl, God bless you, Frank. God bless you, brother. All you guys, you guys are, are wonderful. And, and those of you listening, I, I appreciate you more than you know. I am. Uh, I want you to just know this one thing. Look to the future with optimism because there is a lot to look forward to. Your best days, believe it or not, are ahead of you, but you have to you have to go after it. You have to grab it. You just can't wait for it to come to you. So you, you guys be well and thank you. All right. Well, then, let's get this show on the road, my friend.